your financial commitment to making sure Bob Myers has all the resources to do what he wants to improve the team. Talk about that. Well, you know, uh, we had a very tough thing happen to us, of course, with uh, Clay's injury, second year in a row. But um, we had to do something, and I think we're very fortunate to uh, have had the ability to go and get Kelly Oubre, and uh, we're very happy also with Wanamaker and some of the other additions as well. Well, you, you talked about it's more just a reward to the fans, and you're so competitive, but the fans have been so loyal that you got to spend the money. Just for Dub Nation, you're, you're not going to sit idly by and have a season go by the wayside if you can have other resources to make it happen differently. Well, you know, the thing is, we're in a, in a situation where we have some of our best players who are in their primes, and we just can't let that go by without giving them the best opportunity to win. And we just we just felt like we had to do it. It was a it was a tough situation. We already had a high salary structure, but you know we pulled the trigger. Joe, would you talk about the new city edition jerseys, Oakland Forever, and obviously the court? The time's going to have Oakland on it. Just making sure the people of Oakland realize that the, the, the Warriors are going to thinking about them, and, and this is the Bay Area team. Yes, it is. And we are the Bay Area team. We've said that all along, of course. We're San Francisco, we're Oakland, and uh, we represent all of them. And uh, we want everybody to know that, in fact, that's the case. And how about that move by Baysmore right now? He's having a hell of a first year for us. I'll tell you, the, the nice thing with a Baysmore and a Brad Wanamaker and an Oubre is that the Warriors are so young, but these are some vets that chose to come here that fill in some gaps for Steve Kerr that I think are going to be kind of fun to watch throughout the year. Well, we have, Bob, you might know the answer. Yeah, I think it's nine players with a seven-foot-plus wingspan. Now. So it's pretty interesting. As we are putting the team together, we were starting to realize this, uh, and we made it even more of a target. And even baseball is a seven-foot wingspan. So we're, uh, we're that turnover. But we're, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're really excited about that aspect, and we think we can be a good defensive team and maybe turn some defense into offense. Joe, we were talking about how athletic the Warriors are now, bringing in Kelly. You were obviously Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman. There's going to be some highlights going on, but getting out in transition and being able to run and taking advantage of that athleticism. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm very excited about our team, actually, this year. And I know Steph and I have talked, and we both feel that way. We just feel that uh, if we play in Wiggins, so goes them, kind of so goes the team. We know what Steph's going to be. Yep. But we need we need those guys to, uh, and Draymond, of course, we need those guys to really uh, – this is it. They're 25 years old, both of them. This is the time for them to really make the case uh, for their careers. And if they can be as good as we think they can be, then I think we can be a pretty good team. How about the logistics of Operation Dub Nation, Joe? I mean, you, you have advanced degrees in epidemiology. You're fully aware of, you know, the world we live in, health and science-wise. And to have same-day rapid PCR testing, which is the Rolls-Royce gold standard of health testing, for everyone to come into this building, no franchise has done this anywhere in the world. That's true. And, uh, you know, honestly, we believe that this is probably the safest place you can be right here at, what is it, 615 on the West Coast. Mm. Right now, this place right here, uh, everyone in this building is tested, doesn't matter who you are, with a rapid PCR test, gold standard. And, uh, you know, even if we had, frankly, a lot more people in this building, we think it would be very safe. So that's our goal. We had a plan to have fans, uh, of course, with the with what's going on out there in terms of number of cases and the public health officials, and we weren't able to convince them to, to do anything with respect to fans. But we'll see. Maybe we prove how well it works, and by the later on in the season, maybe uh, we can do it. I thought it was pretty painless today. We both got tested. It was pretty efficient, relatively quick process. So. Man, it was, it. and I'm very curious to hear comments. Nice shot. Uh, comments from the media who also got tested. I'd love to, I'm dying to see their comments. Well, I, I thought it was a good process. Well, see, the NBA performed a, a great example in Orlando in that when you have testing and you have people wearing masks and you have people being safe, three months and no positive tests. And so that's, that's everybody right. that walks into the structure had a PCR test today. And I agree with you, Joe, that this is the safest place to be maybe in the world right now because we're in a building where every single person in here has been tested and tested negative, which is why they were allowed entry into the building in the first place. Exactly. And everyone's wearing masks, of course, unless you're playing on the court. So we're doing everything we can, of course, to make it as safe as possible. Nothing's perfect. This virus is a pretty tough thing. But we think that we can uh, 
We can make it a very safe place. Wanamaker didn't assume that layup was going to be made. And so he stays with it. Denver takes time as the Warriors push it to 14. Boss, hang on, and we'll, we'll talk to you in the next segment. Joe Lacob All right. is staying with us. We are hanging out with Joe Lacob at Chase Center as the Warriors have built a 14-point lead with nine and a half remaining in the second quarter. And, you know, Joe, it's either strength and length or size matters or you know, <laughs> transition defense, whatever slogan you want to come up with. But the style we've seen the last couple minutes is how the Warriors have to play this year. I call it lockdown and go. Go. Lockdown okay, and go. go. All right. you know, Lock a little bit, a little bit of a, you know, the lockdown thing. Picking right. up full court. Look at these guys. Yes, I love it. Actually, this is gonna be a fun style of play for our fans to watch uh, on television. Not in person, unfortunately. But uh, it's, it's, it could be a really fun team, and I think it's fun for the players to play in this kind of system too. Yeah, they're overwhelming it right now. They can't think. Are. Now, your basketball operations staff, when you got Bob Myers and Kirk Lakeup and Kent Lakeup and Larry Harris and Mike Dunleavy. There's a talent component, but also there's a character component. And that's where a Bazemore, you know, we know because he's friends with Steph, Wanamaker, highly regarded, Ubre wanted to be here, is that, you know, that that is equally important sometimes as to the talent is how guys fit and get along and play together. Oh, absolutely. Character matters. Um, I think we all know that. And especially with our organization, led by Steph, and Steve uh, as our coach. I just I just think character is incredibly important, whether it be the draft, free agency, whenever we're adding people to the team. You know, we want to make sure that they're they're all going to fit in what we're trying to build uh, as a whole. It's almost as important as the individual pieces themselves. It's how they fit together and how they how they uh, their character. And that also mattered as you, Steve, and Bob flew around to look at draft selections and James Wiseman I think impressed you guys not only with what he's able to do physically but also in getting to know him a little bit as well absolutely um, I'm not going to you know, put down any of the other players there were some nice players but he really impressed us he was the first player we saw Bob and uh, just his his demeanor his maturity for a 19 year old uh, his, his character his uh, desire I mean we just thought he was he's really the kind of guy we want to have in this organization Wanamaker's got to play beat the clock, and he does with a nice reverse layup. And Brad Wanamaker has fit in nicely in that role, subbing in for Steph and kind of running this second unit. Again, poise under pressure. The shot clock's running down. Don't panic. Just take your time. Oh, make your moves. Smiley, smiley, smiley with the plus. Smiley's going to do something when he's in the game. Good or bad, he's going to make something happen. And you can see all the guys in the white jerseys after that block. It's a sprint up court. Joe says lock down and go. All right. How about the block and go? And Smiley missed the three there. Now, Denver, Utah, Lakers, Clippers. That's probably the upper echelon of the West, Joe. But can you remember the Western Conference being as deep as this year is going to be? Because well, one of the things you guys voted on as owners is this new play-in tournament, 7, 8, 9, 10, which I like it. I think it's, um, you know, hopefully we're better than that and don't have to play in. But uh, I think it's really exciting for the fans, and I, I just think it adds something to to the game. And uh, you're right about the Western Conference. It is so deep, so deep. And uh, good. We've got to play really hard, uh, as do all the teams of the West, uh, quite frankly, to uh, to make the playoffs, never mind, you know, excel. Joe, what do you think about the baseball style traveling? Maybe a little more efficient, fly in, play a couple games, the same team, then fly to the next seed. Probably the best way to keep everybody safe, keep the, the virus from transmitting. Yeah, I think it makes sense, obviously. And look, this is not an easy year. The NBA did a great job in the bubble. I think they're doing a great job at you know, trying to organize a season that we can somehow have. I mean, this is this is obviously not easy in the middle of a pandemic, though, you know, we all think it's going to get better now with the vaccine. Uh, but it, it's tough, and so I think scheduling does matter. Uh, every little thing we can do to keep players safe and to, to try to minimize some of, the, some of the potential issues. I think, Joe, Orlando and the, the successful completion of the season, and then you're talking about how they're going to travel, the protocols for this, there's an ownership player collaboration in this league that really is unlike the other professional leagues. It sure seems like Michelle Roberts and Chris Paul can talk to Adam Silver and your owners and come up with kind of putting your best foot forward as a league and as a sport. And I don't know if we see that kind of cooperation in the other major sports. We do have a great relationship that uh, Adam uh, and the league officials, league executives have fostered with the Players Association. 
that really, obviously, is very necessary at this point in time in history, and it's, it's paying off in a lot of respects. So I do give the players a lot of credit for being good team players, essentially, because we all have to, we're all sacrificing here, and we're all trying to, to you know, bring NBA basketball in a tough year home to our fans. You, you were talking to Steph Curry courtside uh, right as the warm-ups ended. Just as Joe Link of the basketball fan, how, is, how nice is it to see 30 out there running around again? It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I get happy just coming here to see him. <laughs> he has that effect on people. There's, oh, there's no, no two ways about it. He's great. He's the best. And uh, such a great guy, as we all know. And, but when he's out there, you know, you, the first thing you notice is, I hate to say this, but there's so many great players in the league, but he, he's just better. I mean, he's just, he's so skilled, and uh, you notice it right away when you're here and you watch him play. One thing about Steph is he is super competitive, and he wants to win. And obviously, he has owners, you and Peter Gruber, that feel the same way. And I'm sure he appreciates you guys making sure you spend the money and, and surrounding him with supporting cast that is, is going to be able to compete and, and make some noise. Obviously, there's a, new, a lot of new faces, but he and Draymond Green, they're looking to make some noise this season, and obviously, you guys have helped them out. Absolutely. We're doing everything we can. Um, you know, the play injury, is, that's pretty hard to overcome. It is. You know, that's a huge percentage of your cap in terms of salary and uh, and also the quality, you know, the skill level that you're losing with a Clay Thompson being gone. It's hard. You can't replace it, to be honest. But uh, we, we're trying to do the best we can. We've got some young players that we're developing, like Eric Pascal. Oubre coming in, I think, is, you know, could be really good. We're going to do everything we can to give them everything we can to succeed. All right, we're going to let you go at the next break. But as the 10 years owning the team flown by, seven playoff seasons, five trips to the finals, three championships, a brand new building, uh, it's not bad for 10 years of ownership. Well, thank you. And um, I, I do feel that way sometimes that it's flown by. On the other hand, sometimes it feels like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need this whole uh, pandemic thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the list of accomplishments for the 10 years, but also we've seen, you know, there was a David West and Zaza, Sean Livingston and Andre Iguodala, but now this is the time for Steph, Clay, and Draymond to be the leaders of this team. It, they've become the old guys. It, it's an interesting transition. And yes. Curry right on cue, missing that shot. Yes. Well, uh, it's, it's their time, and uh, we're going to try to do the best we can, as we said, to, uh, to help these guys win. They've got to do it on the court. You know, we can only do so much. It's, the play, it's all up to the players, truthfully, uh, and the coaches. Well, you can tell they were itching to get back out here the way they are playing. Just super active on both ends of the floor, obviously bringing their own. That's the one thing about not having fans in the arena. You have to bring your own energy, and they've done a great job of it. Whatever you got to do in the locker room before, if you dance a little harder, maybe go a little harder in warm-ups, whatever it is, bring your own energy out here, and the Warriors are showing it. They're playing really hard, and you got to appreciate that if you're fair. Well, look at the adjustment. Wiggins missed that one three, but he was the first guy back on defense, so Denver couldn't run it back. Remember early on, Kaleta, yeah. when he hit that shot, and he, you know, he had a basket hanger run past him for the layup on the other end. So, you know, Andrew Wiggins, he is also going to be a factor with Oubre. And to Joe's point, of all the players with seven foot wingspan or more, Wiggins is a very long three at the small forward spot. Joe, how how much did Wiggins impress you, especially last year defensively? Come in, obviously a lot of issues, injuries, everything, but. His attitude and his work on the defensive end, getting steals, being active with that, with those, with his hands and that long reach that he has. Can you do you feel like that's going to be a huge asset for them this year? I do. I mean, Wiggins is at that point in his career. I think we all know this. Uh, this is it. This is his chance to shine. He's finally playing with great coaches and a great team, good organization, and um, this is it. He's 25 years old. He's right in the beginning of his prime. And, uh, I think he's, he knows it, and we all know it, and this is his chance to put his, his print, uh, his imprint on the NBA game. And the thing with Andrew is there's not a lot of 25-year-olds that have a 20-point-per-game career average already. And 
but I think the way he will score with the Warriors will be different. I think in Minnesota, he had a lot on his shoulders and sometimes had to break off plays for his own offense. When you have Steph and you have Draymond, and then you're going to throw in guys like Oubre and Wiseman and Pascal and others, I, I think Andrew doesn't have to have the weight of the world on his shoulders, and this is the time at 25 to for that next leap for him on both ends of the floor. And I think one of the big reasons that the Warriors will have some success this year is because, Joe, you guys got a lot of guys that play off the ball and know how to play off the ball, and you need that when you have guys like Steph and, and Draymond Green who are incredible passers. Steph is going to draw a lot of attention to Kevon Looney doing work inside, but picking up guys that have good basketball, high basketball IQ, and know how to move and work off the ball, set the screens, cutting, and taking advantage of the attention that Steph is going to draw is is really critical. How much did you guys think about that when picking up guys? Well, I think we all know that, and uh, there's no doubt that that's that's true. And I think, look, Wiggins and Ubre are the key. I think obviously Draymond has to be Draymond, our number two draft choice. Uh, Obviously, he has to develop over the course of the year and be worthy of being the number two pick. Steph has to be Steph. But I think the key to the team, for me, is the wings. And uh, Wiggins and Oubre, this is their time. And they need to deliver and, and, and be essential components. Now, you're, 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 sitting, do it. you're sitting in a similar spot that you normally do during the regular season. Is it interesting to see the uh, Warrior golf team sitting across from you? That the coaches, <laughs> uh, I'll get to wear the polo shirt, but I think that's a great look. Yeah, um, I hope they're more comfortable. <laughs> I'm still wearing a sport coat. <laughs> Wait, it's, 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 oh, yeah, here we go. Come on. Curry does not miss usually the catch and shoot, but the extra effort. Yeah. And the Warriors couldn't quite get the possession, and here comes Murray pushing the other way. And Gary Harris was fortunate there. He came off Steph's body. Got to stay on him. And Michael Porter, that was good attachment by Looney. Don't leave Porter any airspace at all. Well, Pascal on Millsap, setting up Looney. And Kavad, a little show and go, and he'll get himself to the line. He, he kind of pulled a Jokic on Jokic. How do you like that footwork? Pivot game. Taste of your own medicine. Looked like he was dead in the water and just drop stepped. Got it up. Got the foul. Uh, that was that was good. You know, the good news, you guys, here is we're up 11. We're playing pretty well, and Steph has three points in this game. That's true. true. You know what, Joe? No more talking to him before the game, though. <laughs> it's my fault. That's what it was. It's my fault. <laughs> think, think, think about this, Joe, because obviously you were a season ticket holder even before you bought the team. Wiseman, Looney, Marquise, Chris. When have the Warriors had depth at the center spot like that? You've yeah. a, you had Andrew Bogut, who we all love, and who just retired, and you know, had acquired a JaVale McGee, and you added a Zaza Pachulia, but there's three guys at the five that, that can play a little basketball. Well, we've had some this uh, you know by committee center positions in the past, as you guys know, but usually it was with older guys that you know we kind of got a last year or two out of. Um, in this case, we've got three young yeah, players, all with a lot of potential. So I'm actually very excited about our center position. I think I think if we develop, we can be pretty good. Warriors are contesting shots. There was another good contest on Jamal Murray. No, I mean, you, see, away. you see Gary Harris, so he's such a good defender. He's Solid. waiting for Steph to pass that, and he cut in front of Pascal. And for Denver, they're looking for Harris's three-point shot to come back. That was kind of MIA for them in the playoffs. It was. There's Looney running the floor again. Yes! Steph. There we go. Listen, he's only got three points, but he's making things happen. <laughs> Steph Curry's energy is incredible. Two defenders are going to stay with him. That's going to happen a lot. you got to be ready to attack, and Kevon Looney was. Jamal Murray got over there for the weak side, jumped a little early. Look at the poise. Just a little shot fake. Kaleta Kaleta fans how to finish. Kaleta, the story for the first half. Curry chastised by owner as Warriors build 15-point <laughs> lead. Uh, <laughs> easy. It's so good to see Kavad healthy, though, Joe. He's gone through so much oh my God, to get yes. his body back in shape. He's and, moving well, right? Looks good. You know, people forget how good he was for us uh, a few years ago uh, in the playoffs. And he can be a, a very important member of this team if he can stay healthy. Michael Green floating that in. I, I think Kavon also, too, Joe, is your mentor for Wiseman. You know, I, th I think that's Draymond, Kavon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a big helping another young big as Pascal rattles it up and out with the left hand. And knocked out of bounds. So that will take us to the mandatory timeout. Joe, so much fun talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for Operation Dub Nation, getting everybody in here healthy. We definitely appreciate it. Appreciate it, right, Joe. Thank you. Thank you.
Joe Lankham joined by Kaiser Permanente, plus access to limited season tickets at Chase Center. Check it out at 888-GSW-HOOP. And Joe Lankham talked about it. PCR testing every fan, every person that ever comes into Chase Center. You wear a mask. And hopefully, and, you know, whether it's a couple months down the road, uh, that becomes a possibility. But you know the Warriors will be leading the way in terms of health and safety. And we care for the fans as well as the players and everybody that works here. Yeah. Like we were talking about with Joe, is relatively painless. Fluid situation. Stay flexible. Do what you got to do to stay safe. Take the test. And we're all in here. Well, the thing is... The Warriors are going to lead the way, Kalena, really, for the league. They're, 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 there's too many smart people and too many resources and too much technology in the Bay Area. They're, they're going to create the model that hopefully other teams can follow. And, you know, tonight was a, was the first step in, in trying to, you know, prove that everybody can be safe and, and take care of ourselves while we do this. Well, they're, just, great. they're just so forward-thinking when it. it comes to every department, marketing, too. And it's just everything the Warriors do top-notch. I love that Wiggins was there on Porter to force that air ball. That, you know, don't assume, oh, he, he's not going to get that off in time. Andrew Wiggins sold out to make that a, a very difficult closeout, and then Porter airballed it, 24-second violation. This is how the Warriors have to play. They've been the more aggressive team really on both sides of the floor. They're getting fast break points, super aggressive defensively with their hands, activity. Wiggins, stop with the key jumper. Well, I would say, partner, uh, they've had 277 days off. So, so they're they rested. They couldn't wait to get out of here. <laughs> they're, they're rested. The only warrior that played in the playoffs in the bubble was Wanamaker. Gotta love what Andrew Wiggins is doing. Just stop kind of the no man's land as the Denver Nuggets are trying to switch that little exchange. See, now look at Pascal, year one to year two. He didn't reach down to commit a foul. He just moved his body. And then the ball was lost out of bounds, created the turnover. You know, young guys reach and get that chopping down where they get the whistle. Pascal played that like a veteran. Eric is going to continue to improve in every area. And defensively is one of those areas. Look at him on time from the weak side, just kept his hands up. Yep. And made Jamal Murray have to go around him. Problem was for Jamal Murray, that was out of bounds. So did you ever change anything in your shooting motion? Because remember we talked about Pascal this offseason had to change that little hitch that he had had his whole life. And we already saw one jumper that looked very, very good. Not when I was in the NBA. I got all my changing out before I got to the NBA. But he's, he's been working on it. You can tell it looks more smooth. There's no wasted motion with his jumper, that little hitch. He's not hanging a little too long. That's the one thing with jump shooters that they always have an issue with, that release has to be at the top of your jump or before. If you release it after the top of your jump, you're going to be shooting with your hands. It's going to be short a lot. So that's what he's been working on. You think Oubre can guard point guards? He made Murray give it up. And then there's Millsap hitting from deep. But Kelly Oubre was doing his little Clay Thompson impersonation there, guarding Jamal Murray. He competes on that end. He is a tough, tough customer. And Wiggins, he took Michael Porter to task and got all the way to the iron. You love Andrew Wiggins being aggressive. And he can get downhill. When he is assertive and looking to get to the basket and just play his game, he is so tough to guard because he's so athletic. He's got the length, the quick, quick first step. And once he gets to the rim, he may dunk on you. His finishing game is on point. Wiggins already with eight. Missed the first free throw and curled out the second one. At halftime, we're going to kind of delineate some of the changes in this season. It's definitely not your 82 gamer, and the playoff system's a little different. There's a lot to talk about. See Looney switch for yeah. Steph there. It was a stagger ball screen. Steph got hung up, so Looney recognized it, switched out, and now they're going to reward themselves. Wow. Almost up there. But that's Kelly in the corner, though, and that was off of Wiggins' delivery as Steph pushed it. So those are the kind of threes you want to shoot. That, exactly. that was a good look in transition off of the stop. This time, Looney will be called for the kind of excuse me foul on Millsap. You know, there's a question on Denver in that Murray's elite, Jokic is elite, Porter's a comer. Is Paul Millsap, is, 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 it, is he crested the top of the mountain on the way down? He's on the way down. He's on the way down, but he's a guy you still want on your team because he's a great locker room presence and leader. He had some big moments in the playoffs in the bubble last season where 
they really needed a spark, and he came in and gave it to them. And so he's a guy you still want, but look, athletically, he's not the most athletic guy in the world. He's going to play more of a floor game. He's got good post game and all those things, but look, you can still take advantage of him on the defensive side. As Steph just did there, just kind of blew past him even through the defense. Were you wondering if Curry's handles had uh, slowed down at all? I saw him working before the game. He looked good. Got the headband. Look, just behind the back. That is tough. High, high ball screen. And when they set it that high, Curry's going to have a ton of space to maneuver and work his magic like he did there. He's got all the handle in the world. He's always working on that. Did it again this summer. All the nuanced ways you can work on your handle technology. He's doing all of that. I'm waiting for the ugliness in the fight on who shoots the technical free throws because Brad Wanamaker was 93% and led the NBA in free throw percentage last year. Wait, is he and Curry, do they have to arm wrestle to shoot those tees? Nah, Steph's going to get that. Okay, he's got to get Let the shooter do it. He's the shooter. He's the guy. It's his team. When he's out of the game, you step to the line. <laughs> there you go. Shot clock at six. And there's Millsap. We said working on that three. How about that? So Paul Millsap. Later in his career, not kind of adding that tool to his game. Shot clock off, final three seconds. Pascal kick it out to Wiggins, his three, and that will do it. But I'll tell you, for the Warriors and the Nuggets, 77-day layoff for Denver, 277 days for the Warriors, 61-50.